Hey, sleepy machine. How you doing? How are you doing, Ikumin? What's up, Mushri? Alexander Burkle. Sounds good, my man. Hey, Omni Slash. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya. UGCI Gaming, how are you doing? Sleepy says it's gonna be spriting to the end of time. <laughs> How many characters do you have, Sleepy Machine? Just got a pseudo lighting effect done. Nice. Ask away, Ikumin. I live to serve. How did you make your driftwood Easter egg? Um, which one? The first Easter egg had to have been the being able to select a mechanica, mechanical battle toaster, which was a joke. And I'm like, we need a third option. Let's just, uh, this. And, and then someone made the artwork for it, and I was like, okay, it's a, it's a thing now. And... The second one was if the character picked the mail and named it Driftwood. Can you tell it? You mean the person who made the battle toaster? I think it was Vapor. Anyway. Akusen, man. How you doing, Unpro, Unpro Pro? Thank you for coming to the stream. We should get started. How did I make that naming driftwood? I'll show you right now. We'll, we'll do that real quick. Oh, I should probably link my... Let's get this going here. How's it going, everybody? I'm Drift from Driftwood Gaming. Thank you so much for coming to the Natural Explorers live stream. I'm going to do some self-promotion real quick. If you'd like to self-promote, you can do so. Link is in the description below to the Discord channel where you can have people look at your stuff, come to the self-promo channel, <clears throat> and post your links here. So we're going to be doing some Tarax lighting today. I'm doing very well on Pro Pro. Thank you so much. No worries, my dude. No worries. So yesterday, 
yesterday at the end of the stream we, we started adding a way to have lighting using light on and then using a number from 100 plus to pick all the, the lamps and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about So if the player runs through the cave, it's really dark and they can't see very much, but if they toggle on the lights, then, you know, that obviously creates lighting. And then once they toggle the torch on, it will stay on. Can't see my character. So we're not supposed to start here. that teleporter. Driftwood naming Easter egg, please. Okay. Well, to start off, I'm using a naming plugin. You can use any plugin you want. I'm using Dreadwing's text input plugin. So I'm using text input and then the name of the character and the number of characters I want to allow and then yeah, so I'm using this plugin. When the character starts, they pick if they want to be male or female. Right here. And if they say male, or if they say boy, then it'll add the party member, remove a party member, and let the player name that party member. Well, the next thing we do is we check. We control the variable. And we're going to set that variable to one to so that we can see which character we have. But the, the that's not the Easter egg. The this is all set up for the Easter egg. The Easter egg itself is actually checking the database. So I'm doing a, a conditional statement by going conditional branch, going to tab four, going down to script, and typing in um, basically checking the name of actor one. And you can see that code here. I'm, set, I'm typing dollar sign game, capital A on actors, dot actor. Open up the parentheses, and I'm putting the number of the actor I'm checking. So I'm checking the first one, since the player picked boy, that's the first actor. And then I'm using dot to say that the next thing is a property of this. And so we're saying name. So is the name of actor one, and I'm using two equal signs to make a comparison statement. If I wanted to assign something, I would use one, but we're doing a comparison in a conditional branch, so we have to use two equal signs. And we're using quotations to specifically say a string value with this name. So if the player put that in the value of the name of actor one, so if, if the name of actor one is exactly spelled like this, the conditions will return as true, and it'll run everything we say to do after that Otherwise, it's just going to completely ignore it. So that's how we made it. Uh, a simple conditional statement that checks the name of the actor after the player gets to name the actor. And if they do name it Driftwood, then we can make it do whatever we want, right? So I said, play the slurp sound effect, show some text, um, and give them an item. And then the item we created does other stuff too. So we'll look at the item. We made an item called Driftwood in here somewhere it's right here we went to a sprite and we made that that icon we saved it in our icon set.png we gave it some flavor text and we made it consumable from the menu screen only with no scope and after we use the item it calls a common event so we go to other down a common event and we selected a common event so when the player uses the item they got in the selection menu after naming their character driftwood it's going to call the common event eat the driftwood so we can jump over to common events and see this is what happens when the player uses the item it's showing a picture which is the the fake game over screen then we're waiting for three seconds to make the player think it's game over but not too long to make them restart and then we're showing choices we're going to say we're going to give them three choices the first one says uh, 
what? Wait, why? And then if the player selects that, nothing happens and it erases the picture. It's just a prank, bro. If they say not right now, same thing happens. But if they concede, if they give up and they say, yep, it's GG, bro. You got me. I'm dead. It actually calls the game over menu. When the game does a game over, we change the code uh, inside of the um, the libraries. Not, not necessarily the library. The game's JS files. <clears throat> so that the game over skips the title screen. I can go to my quick notes. And I made a note of the changes that I made. So when the game is um, in RPG scenes on JS on line 1830 and 2690, I changed the go to scene title by saying data manager dot set up new game and scene manager dot push scene map. And it's, it's gonna just uh, go to the player's starting location instead of the actual scene title. So we're skipping the scene title when the player ends the game and when the player game overs. And we're using a plugin to do this for when the game first starts. So that's the whole thing, right? That's the whole Easter egg. And I did the same thing for if they pick female, if they pick girl, and then they put in the name T for the, for the girl. And you get a mask that changes the face set. Similar thing, but different. But is your wood drifting? Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> Have a good one, bro. Okay, so what I was going to be doing is fixing the Tarax lighting inside of the underground area. I think we got to this point. I wanted to do this methodically from top left all the way to bottom right and go through these events as if I was reading text, reading it as text. So I remember doing this one, yep. So we're going to copy this, and this is light 108. This one was 109, and this is where we ended. So I'll copy this here, and this will be 110. And then we do a um, plugin command. Light on 110, when the player turns it on. And we can go across here. And this is a different one. This is going to have the light from a something like this rather we'll just change the direction so we'll change the direction I think direction one is the is for facing down one uh, two three four right <clears throat> This will be light 111, plug in command, light on 111. So when the player interacts with this, it turns the self switch on, which goes to this, and it also turns this light on 111. With Terex lighting, if you put a number after the light itself, it'll, it'll look at that and check to see if you've given it a plug in command to turn that number on. So it'll be off by default. If you want it on by default, you can have a parallel process that just turns it on as soon as you, an erase event. Parallel process, light on, 111, and then erase event. Or you can use a switch on that event as well to have it only turn it on the first time. It's up to however you want to do it. Is this possible to do rainbow lighting in Terax? Yeah, you can. You can totally do that. When my game will be out, would you try it? Maybe Ikumin. Light on 112.
this is 115. How did I learn programming? Lua and GS. <laughs> GS? Game Maker Studio? You mean GML? Or you mean JS? Just by trying it, looking at plugins, very confused, scratching my head. And then I went to um, Free Code Free Code Camp. Hold on, let me get a link for you. I think you should do this at your age. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's the perfect age to start learning because by the time you're 21, if you do a little bit of coding every day, you'll be a master. You'll be a genius at it. And all your friends will be like, how do you make the computer do that? I wish I would have started at your age. What should you do there? Well, I would say, let's see. Click on start coding, it's free. Hold on, is that gonna show my things? I don't wanna... Yeah, it'll go here. And then you make an account. You can make one with your email, with your Facebook, your GitHub account, or your Google. Whatever you do is up to you. I think I chose Google for mine. So once you sign in, however you want to do it, you just click on anything right here in the curriculum, or you can click on the home page, right? The home page will go right here. Go to the coding curriculum. It'll tell you how many challenges you've done and how many projects you've built and how, to, how many certifications you've got. And it looks like I've only done 75 out of the 1,409 that are here. Go to the coding curriculum and it'll start you with like a, a, um, a problem on the left hand side right it's very easy just start at the top don't look at everything and go whoa just start one line at a time basic javascript replacing if else chains now this is because this is where i'm at can't remember where i was at i think so for you it won't it won't show this you're gonna click on curriculum after you've signed, in, you've signed in, and then you can select what you wanna learn, how to do responsive web design, basic HTML, or introduction to HTML, or you can go to CSS and select the lessons you wanna do, do there. So it's completely up to you what you wanna do. I've skipped the web design because I already know enough to, to make my website and whatnot. And I went straight to JavaScript. So I went right here. And then I suggest you go to JavaScript and go basic JavaScript and you go to introduction to JavaScript and you see when you complete one of the assignments, it'll make a check mark, right? So I've done all these assignments and here's where I'm at, replacing if chain. So it started me here. So I should definitely come back through here and start doing more lessons because this is not a whole lot. But anyway, start right there with the comment, your JavaScript code. And this will be the first one you, you do. And read everything, right, on the left-hand side. Basic JavaScript, comment your JavaScript code. Comments are lines of code that JavaScript will intentionally ignore. Comments are a great way to leave notes to yourself and to other people who will later need to figure out what the code does. There are two ways to write comments in JavaScript. Using two slashes will tell JavaScript to ignore 
the remainder of text on this current line. So if we type like this, and we say this will be ignored by the compiler. And then there's another way, because if we type here, this is all part of code. The next way is to do a line and an asterisk. And you can say this will also be ignored. And to end it, you do an asterisk and a line like that. And now the code, code goes here. And then when you get the code, when you, when you type it on the right hand side, the way that it's asking you to, so it's saying, best practice as you write code you should regularly add comments uh, blah 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 try creating one of each comment so it's saying this is your assignment right here create a comment that works like this and create a comment that works like this with multiple lines and then when you've done it the way that it's asked you you say run the tests and it'll say hey you did it and you can submit and go to the next challenge if it asks you to donate, you don't have to do that. So you just click on maybe later, okay? When it brings this up, just say maybe later. And it'll take you to the next one. If you ever get too far over your head and you want to go back, you click on curriculum and you can go back into the, all of them. And you can basically select any one you want and learn in any order you want. Start with the very simple ones and then work your way down. And then boom, before you know it, you're a programmer. And if you start at age 11, even if you don't know it now, you may know it tomorrow and if you don't know it tomorrow maybe you're gonna know it next week if you keep trying and then next month and then by a year you'll probably have all of this done right you have all this so keep trying Ecomin and anybody else who's trying to code start with the uh, freecodecamp.org it's a really good website That's the spirit, Ikumin. People are gonna wanna know, how did you how do you know that? How did you learn that? And just say research. I researched it, bro. I researched it. And they'll be like, what does that mean? Basically, that means looking for the answer and finding it. I know this isn't the most exciting thing, watching the same event, but I need to get all of these events done. And sometimes we have to do the monotonous tasks to complete our project. If you have questions, I will field them and answer them. And if I can provide you with a good answer, I'll try to. So if you have questions about this project, or anything in general about game design, I will do my best to answer it. Skyping, how are you doing?
B says, look at that fine looking dungeon. It is pretty good, huh? I thought it was fantastic. This map was made. by Cry's History. I think we just go by Cry by now. What was the last one I did? This one was 122. That's it. This one might be lit up. Oh, we need to put lighting here too. Ah, oh, shoot, I did. Copy, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Needs to be 136. Light on 136. And then we're done with this map. You can move on. This one doesn't have a switch. So we need to do that. This one's just on by default, isn't it? This is giving off a light, so let's not have this one on by default. What we can do is copy this page, go here, paste this page, go to page one, copy that, paste that here, delete the first page, and now require this to have self-switching. And now it works like the rest. Except this is light on. 136. This doesn't need to be. Gosh. And bada boom! Hey, we got it! Guys, we did the whole map with Tarax lighting. Run around a little bit. What's up, Charles and Nico? How are you doing? How's your day going? Doc Wee said he had a tutor for a while, but you lost interest in programming. Oh, the whole little free code camp? Yeah, that was because Ikumen asked how to start learning programming, and I, um, I thought that was a good. That is a good way to start, because you'll get the idea. And then you'll probably, at some point, install like Node.js or some sort of 
compiler so you can do stuff. But you need to you need to learn how the code looks before you start worrying about getting a compiler. I like that some sections with beams differ from the layout and it looks artificial. The torches seem to work just fine. Let's look at the lighting here. That lighting works too. <clears throat> So I don't want the map to be very dark, but I do like uh, Tarax lighting. So once the player gets the torches lit, the map will be pretty bright, but you'll still have subtle shadows, which adds a little bit to it, I think. Let's test the teleporter. Nice, let's test it going back in. So obviously those two teleporters don't go to the, the, the right spots, right? Because when we go in from that point, it takes us here. But when we go out, this teleporter is taking us somewhere else. Let's look at the transfer event here. It's putting us here, which it shouldn't. Let's have it put us somewhere else. For now. What about right here? Actually, I want that this one. Oh wait, that's the one we're changing. Yeah, I want that one to do that. And then this one, where does it take us? I want it to take us. Why does Royal keep retracing messages? <laughs> I don't know, it does say that though. Retracted. Doc Wee says, I lost interest in learning Japanese. I still want to learn, but I need to get some of the stuff done before. <clears throat> yeah, Japanese is a cool language. I know how to say a few things thanks to having to party in Final Fantasy XI back in the day. The auto-translate did most. But... To Rack's lighting, that's the lighting engine that we're using. You see how we, we walk around and it's got like this Pokemon cave lighting thing, so it's like all dark. And you can turn on um, lights like that using the plugin command. And now the torch has got light in the, in the area. All right, see how it's dark down here in this corner? But if we turn on the light, the torch, now it'll, it'll keep the, the map lit up. This is all to Rack's lighting, it's a plugin. Lighting our maps up, right? That was one of the things that we needed to, to do to catch uh, to catch up. Let's test this teleport. Let's transfer event to take us to a certain point, and then put us back in the same point. And it does. So now that works. Cool. 
making sure that I got all the numbers right so that I don't hear, turn on a switch and then it turns on two of them. So if you use the same number, you turn on one torch and we'll turn on both torches. <coughs> anyway, that looks like it's working perfect. So we're done in the underground. Hey, we're done. Now we have to do under the underground. Yay! What number did we leave off? I'm actually going to skip ahead instead of taking that exact number, which was 136. And I'm going to go straight to 200 because this will be easier for me if I want to add more lights. And I know that all of the 100 something are on this map. And then all of the 200 stuff are on these maps. So what we'll do is copy the note tag for the light, the very large lights. I'll do the same method. I'll start at the top and go through it from left to right, top to bottom, like this, 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 until we have everything. And I'll start right here and I'll say 200. Light on 200. Making a game is work. It is lots of work. Wait, is this one, two, three? Wait, no. Yeah, zero, one, two, three. This one. I was like, why are we on the fourth one but putting three? Because we started at zero. 200. 201, 202, 203. 204. I never learned kanji or kanji or hiragana royal. Only like how to say a few things like um domarigato gozaimashita. But Nobody really says that when I talk to them in real life. I, I've known of, I've only talked to a few Japanese people in real life, like ex excluding when I go to like Japanese restaurants or whatever. Is YouTube crashing? It's not my ISP. So every time I actually talk to Japanese people, they're just like, whoa, you know, like, it's like, it's like, thank you very much. You know, um, I would formally like to thank you for your whatever, you know, like it's it's too much, too formal. Uh, you can just say domo, like thanks, or you can say gozaimasu, and that just means like thanks. Hajimimashite. Hajimimashite. It's like, uh, it's nice to see you or nice to meet you, something like that. I haven't, I don't use it. I never speak uh, Japanese, but when I was playing Final Fantasy XI a lot, I would type it quite often. This is our transfer event. I want to do a light here as well. So let's take the directional light that we put here call it direction one. And these lights will never be turned on or turned off. They're just on always because they're supposed to simulate the light coming from above. one <clears throat> 204 
and I didn't do that, but I moved over here to 205. No, I didn't. Did I go here? Did I do here? You know, zero, one, two, three, four. We're gonna go here for five. JS is so simple. I agree, Ikumin, you can do it. It gets more complicated as you get farther along. Keep doing the exercises. But keep that mentality. That's the right that's the right mentality. If you don't immediately get it, don't beat yourself up. Just do some, say it with me, research, right? Look it up. If you don't have the answer, you research it. 208. 207, 208. 209. And pay attention to the syntax as well, like the spelling, the capitalization of things, because sometimes if you spell it right, but you forgot to capitalize in the right spot, it'll say you did it completely wrong when you actually did it right. You just missed one letter, wasn't capitalized, or it, it needed to be lowercase, or something like that. So pay attention when that happens too. You may be doing it right, even though it says it's wrong, but it, it may be looking for something very specific.
Sometimes I have to say it out loud just so that I don't lose my place. Seven. Oops, almost called it 2,227. Light on to Light on to 29. That should do it. One more light we have to put in. We're going to put in the directional light coming from this right here. And now we should probably give ourselves an avatar. Let's go ahead with uh, start the party with, with somebody. Doesn't matter. We'll start with uh, Jinx. And we'll start here, and we'll just run around testing the teleports <clears throat> and the Terrax lighting. What are you guys talking about? Bars are so simple. Yeah. Google Translate does not know how to Google Translate. <laughs> Benjamin Viet says, hey there, just join the stream. May I ask what plugin you're using for the lighting? Is it a self-made one? No, it is called Terax Lighting. And we're gonna have a look at it right now. So it has directional lighting. If we walk off the map. Did I not change my starting position? Oh, I'm starting transparent. Okay, that would explain it. Is it very hard to understand? It's pretty easy, really. You've been out of RPG Maker for quite a while, and somehow I'm into going for a new project. So you should probably start a new one at some point, because you'll learn new things. You can mess around in your old one to get back up to speed, and then start from scratch, because if you were out for a while, the new project will probably have new versions, and plugins will be out of date, and if you're gonna like start fresh, you should probably start with a new project. Unless you've, been, you've sunk in years of work into this project, I don't know, I may be speaking without all the information. There are some pretty good tutorials on Terax. Yes, I also have some. It's one of the easier ones to use. I agree with that. Is anyone here multilingual? More than three? I want to know what language you think in. Yeah, that's interesting. I think in madness and lunacy. Is that a language? Sure it is, Doc. Sure it is. Okay. There's our transfer, and it takes us to not the right map. Where should this map, this transfer event, take us? This is under the underground, <clears throat> so if we're going up, we should probably come from a hole in the underground area, I would imagine. And this is relatively the bottom. So I'm thinking right here. It should take us right here. Make us face left. 
We should also call a common event here. Okay, let's call our transfer common event. Transfer zoom. And let's go to the underground and make sure that this transfer event takes us back to where we came from, right here. Yeah. And now this one is going to take us, wait, what, 97 by 90. Where is that on the map? Okay, so it's saying goat is right there. Is there a better or different location I would like to have for that? Maybe not. Actually, yes. I want to put that in one of the crypts. The tower is going upwards. And the basement is going down. Two of the crypts have teleporters down. So I'll have it on crypt nine. Facing right. And now I'm going to go to crypt nine and make sure that this transfers to where I think it should be transferred. transfer zoom on the other one let's see yeah it's there okay back into the underground under the underground that transfer event should work and what other transfer events do we have we have this one and this one is not going to take us to map one this one is going to take us to crypt 10 was it or eight this one face left with the transfer zoom and we'll check here to take us to under the underground I'll probably move these things around a little bit. Where is this supposed to take us? The basement? Right, the basement doesn't go anywhere yet, so okay. It's sort of a dead end one right there. But this goes up. You go here from the map, from the graveyard, and then you go to the right and in here, and then that takes you to here. And if you go down, Put you in the towers. I kind of forgot. I did all these a week ago or two weeks ago. But we'll test them as we need to. Just interact sliding now. So that should be fine. We'll run through the map and test all of the lamps. The lamp lanterns. The lamps, the lanterns. Try to put those into torches, I guess. 
put all that in one word. Yeehaw! Damien, Floyd, English, Spanish, some Latin, and learning Japanese for my languages. Also, good morning. Good morning, Damien. How are you doing today? Thank you for joining the stream. Appreciate it. Learning a new language can be very hard. You have to have somebody who will talk with you in the language, I feel. Because if there's not somebody you're interacting with in that language, your brain is like, hey, I don't need to know this. Make room for something I need to know. And it like fights you to learn new things. The plugin problem is a pretty big one. It seems like nearly all the plugins are outdated and since following your channel, I've learned so many new things. Cool, I'm glad that you're learning new things. There's a lot of good creators out there making tutorials. Creating dungeon rooms and connecting them is a noodle fest. Absolutely, Armin. Yeah, you should look at a newer project, for sure. You've been into RPG making since 2000. VX Ace was where I made most of my progress as well. Like, VX Ace is where I learned how to, to properly do switches and variables. So coming from VX Ace to to MV, I was like, yeah, let's let's get this done. And since I've gone into MV, I've made the most progress, I think it may, is a better way to say it. I've learned, I've, I've really made huge strides coming from like XP to VX and VX Ace, but like fundamentally on the fundamentals. But in MV, I've really expanded. So now I'm like doing sprite work with a sprite. Um, I'm recording my own sound effects. I'm using Fruity Loops to mess around with audio tracks. And um, I used Sonar before to do, you know, in other DAWs to make to make music and stuff. But um, I'm using this more in a game creation sense now. So since I've been messing with MV over the past three years is where I've made the most progress for sure overall because I've, I've kind of brought in the, the horizons and what I've been able to do more coding as well like I never did any coding I looked at Ruby and I was like I don't know so I never really picked up Ruby the, the most I learned with Ruby was how to change some numbers so that I can get the script to do what I want to do inside VXAs a lot of galves scripts for uh, VXAs You're not a big artist when it comes to drawing. Yeah, me neither, but you st you'll probably come to find out over the next year you're gonna get better at it and you'll have to do a lot of your own work. How funny is it if one of the dungeon rooms lead you to a debug room and a sprite that looks suspiciously, suspiciously like Driftwood, bribes a character with a rare item, kicks them out of the door and, and vanish. I mean, we could do something like that for sure. Um, I'm not a parent. I don't think I'm having any issues with it today. Luckily, knock on something. Um, the ISP looks good, YouTube looks good. It says green, stream healthy. So if you're having any issues, try refreshing. I'm not saying it. I will have no issues. My ISP likes to drop me sometimes. Damien Floyd says 2003 was my first RM engine and I'm doing okay. Just listening to the stream while working. Awesome. I liked 2003 a lot. When 2003 came out, I was really hyped because it had a side view battle system, right? So I loved 2003. RPG Maker 2000 was, was a thing too. Didn't they have a 1995 version? I remember like when I was a little kid messing with it and obviously not knowing how to do anything but like visual novels type of thing, uh, but still having fun writing stories and making interactable move events and stuff and be super um, excited over getting characters to move at the same time and, and scenes and like being able to visualize like somebody saying something, you're on the cliff, blah, blah, blah. And then the fireball animations, it, it really like uh, got me going early on. 
the movements and animations and stuff and being able to like tell a story with the, the computer. So I think that really was important as well. So every iteration and every time I come back to it, um, I get another layer of ability and skill. ISB, you shall not pass. Yeah. I actually tweeted at them <laughs> later on the day when they, they dropped me for like two or three minutes. I tweeted at them and I, I sent that image, the Gandalf with the staff in, uh, in the ground. I tweeted both of their, both of their tweeters. Some layered mapping for RM would be nice. Check out Tile D, Alexander Virgil. Tile D. T has been messing with, with Tiled. I don't know if it's Tile D or Tiled, but um, my wife's been messing with it and she's putting together some crazy looking maps where you can walk behind it and then if you go up the stairs, you're on top of it, but you're on the same. I'm like, how are you doing that? I, I've messed with it, I don't understand. I didn't obviously put as much time. I think she was working on it for like two days straight. Yeah, it's really, really cool. I haven't looked at the terms of use recently. Can you use RPG Map Maker assets in other game engines? No, you cannot, Royal. As far as I can tell, you can't use RPG Maker default assets in any other engine. Like, I'm sure you can for educational purposes, but you cannot commercially do it. Like if you want to put uh, your sprites in Game Maker to learn how to put sprites in and, and you know and how to import, no one's going to give you anything over that. That you can totally do that. But if you try to sell a game made with, uh, like say Game Maker Studio Two, but it's using RPG Maker assets, there could be a problem with the terms of service there. Are they going to come after you? Probably not. But I don't think you're supposed to do that. And they could sue you if they wanted to. But I don't think they will. But you shouldn't. <laughs> I know I'm sending mixed messages, but for education, yes, for commercial use, no. You had RPG Maker on the 3DS? Yeah, I don't know. That seems like a lot of work because... We're only as fast as our interface, right? That's why I like PC over mobile and over console because the interface is so much faster. If I could have a neural lace put into my brain so that I can send data to a computer faster, I would be very tempted to do that sort of thing because we're limited by how fast we can type, how fast we can click on things. But if uh, we were to learn how to use a better, faster interface, we'd be able to get information and, and interact and do things faster. So, because the interface on a, on a console or 3DS is, is this, like this thingy, even if you had some sort of external keyboard, it would uh, it just slow it down so much that it's already takes so much work and so long to make a project that it would kind of defeat the purpose, but there's, spe there's special case use for 3DS and getting it on a uh, um, what is the Switch? Nintendo Switch? Because what if you're like uh, waiting in a doctor's office for somebody and you're just messing with your game right there? That's pretty cool, right? You can be working on your project, even if it's just for a hobby, um, while you're in a car, you know, uh, somebody else is driving and you're a passenger. You could be working on your project on your Switch. So that's cool. It does have a, uh, a, a, a niche market value, right? Because you can you can do it wherever you're at, and that's the thing. Whereas if you're using a PC, you can't lug your PC. If you have your laptop, you can take your laptop, but it's even more accessible if it's in like a little phone or on a Switch. So I get it, there is a market for it, and it's only a good thing that RPG Maker is on more consoles, right? It's only going to benefit all users of RPG Maker if it is more widely spread, more people will know about it, you'll have a bigger audience. If you're selling a game, Quite often, your audience are people who make games. So if more people are making games, when you sell an RPG Maker game, you're gonna have more people buying your product to see what you're doing. Uh, so it's only a good thing. So we shouldn't uh, resist this, putting RPG Maker on consoles and, uh, and uh, 3DS and Switch and mobile and all that. 
It's definitely for the better because it's going to expand. It's going to put it in the hands of more nine-year-olds, right? So when they mess with that for two years, three years, five years, however long it takes, they finally get a PC. They can come to the big leagues and now, you know, you have another person consuming your content, whether that be your game or your videos or whatever you're doing. So it's really a good thing. I was buying memory cards like mad. I was wondering how they're going to do the DLC, right? They're probably gonna make a killing off of down the selling uh, DLC for game dev engines on mobile slash Switch. Is the Switch version of MV able to cross use the games I make on PC? Do you have information about this? I mean, could I really work on my game from the PC from the PC on my Switch? No. As far as I can tell, they are independent of one another, but it's not uh, completely isolated because uh, I looked at a video and it looks like there was a button for sharing your game. So the, the games you make with your, because um, it's called MV Limited and it's on the Switch. The games you make with MV Limited on the Switch, you can share with people on a, um, like I guess Nintendo network or something. You up, It uploads them and then other people can play those games on their Switch. So you can have people downloading your game. It's still basically all gonna be the same assets. They're gonna see the same tile sets, the same sprites, but um, at least it'll be able so that they only have to download the map data and not all of the resources and stuff. So it's going to be pretty mediocre, like Ahmed said. The DLC will be mediocre, yeah. Even, even that, even with DLC, everyone's game is going to essentially look the same uh, when it comes to that. But you are able to share your game with other Switch users and vice versa. You can play other people's games. But I don't think, maybe in the future there will be a thing where PC games can be played on the Switch and the Switch games can be played on PC. But right now I don't see that interconnectivity happening, probably due to bandwidth limitations. Would you consider Patreon being commercial use? Not trying to spam, just curious. If you're making money selling the game, yes, absolutely. Even if you don't release it on a on Steam or Itch, probably, yeah. Could you get away with it? Depends on how much you make. If you make a couple hundred dollars, it's not gonna bother you. If you make a couple thousand, probably not gonna bother you. you start making 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, they're gonna come after that money. They want that money. And they will probably just send you a cease and desist if you don't make much money. At some point, they'll, they'll shut you down. You'll get a letter from a lawyer saying, stop and get some help. Every RPG maker's dream is to make a pretty penny from their game. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, let's test our... That was a nice little discussion. You guys asked some very good questions. Thank you for coming to the stream, everybody. Um, I appreciate you guys. You get my brain going. bright enough yeah I mean you could probably put in a few more over here but not necessarily need it you don't really need to because it's like a dark chasm of nothing this has a very eerie atmosphere to it I want to put some ME on these maps too, like an ambiance type of sound effects. Like, you know, you have your rain and your jungle. I want to make my own uh, looping sound effects that is like a atmospheric type. You know, another thing that I should be putting in is a sound effect, right? 
when you light the torch and maybe a little weight like a not a lot of padding just like a five frame weight let's test the transfer a bit yeah that works fine wait did this one turn off hold on no i just probably didn't turn it on Dockway says, I just want to make enough to have a wage so this can go from a passion to a job. I mean, don't we all? We just want to be able to work on our project for a living and not have to answer to some corporation. I mean, that's every creative's. I mean, not every, but that's the majority of a creative mind's passion, right? Uh, desire to be able to be self-sufficient, doing the things that they love. Now, one thing that people often, I hear this a lot, like, it's like, if you, if you do what you love, then you're not even, then your job is easy. And, and um, it's because you love your work and you, it, that way it doesn't feel like work. Bullshit. Your work is going to feel like work, even if you love doing it. And you're not going to love every single day of doing the thing you love to do. And, and especially if it becomes um, too forced. So when you do things that you love to do for money, you have to be careful. Because at some point you're going to ask yourself, am I doing this just for the money now? Because if, if it becomes to that, you're walking a slippery slope. And... Um, you're probably not going to be happy. Like you can make money on something and it could still not make you happy. Once you get past a certain point, everybody needs money to be happy. You know, I don't, people are like, oh, money doesn't buy happiness. It doesn't after a certain point, but you do need money to be happy at some point. You're going to need basic like living expenses, right? You're gonna need to have all your bills paid um, a little tiny bit of free money to get new stuff every now and then. Um, not very often, even. Just enough to feed yourself well, feed your family well, um, pay all of your bills, um, and be net gaining, right? Like, if you were to buy nothing excessive, you would keep showing a growth and your income would be going up. And not living paycheck to paycheck. Once you get past that point, more money doesn't necessarily make you more happy. I think we got all the switches. I think that works just fine. This is a beautiful cave. Just wanna say, prize history, you did a fantastic job on these maps, and I really appreciate it. It helps so much. Cool. Oh, that that reminds me, that face bug right there. It didn't show the bug until we closed it and loaded it a second time. Somebody made me a plugin specifically trying to fix that issue. Let me catch up to what you guys are saying. And we're gonna install a new plugin. to see if it'll fix that bug. All RPG Maker Switch games will have theme six. Yeah. Omni Slash says, my dream is to make a game people can enjoy. Alexander says, I just want to tell a good story and maybe get a job as a game developer. Ahmed says, a game can both be fun and profitable. That's true. That zoom camera, when, get in, how? Oh, that's easy, Dark Hunter. I'll show you right now. Welcome back, Blue Shrink.
Doc Weez says, I love doing game development, but I hate sound design. So even if I got to the point where this is a job, I would still be hard. It would still be hard to do sound design. Why is sound design hard for you? Um, have you tried? Have you, um, like, I mean, obviously, yeah, but have you um, put in multiple, have you tried multiple times to go back to sound design? When you say sound design, are you, are you specifically talking about making the music or are you talking about getting the sound effects in or both? Or are you having a hard time picking the ones or finding the one that's appropriate? At some point, every game developer is going to hit a wall and, and have to take a break and come back to assess what's important in, the, in their game. Or they're going to have to hire somebody to do something, right? There's nothing wrong with hiring somebody to do something for you. That's, that's going to result in a most likely a better project as long as it still has clear direction because um, you're going to have multiple talents but you also have to risk you have to weigh the risk right the cost versus reward i need the sound design in this game but am i going to pay a composer to write like 12 original tracks am i going to pay somebody specifically to make all the sound effects or should i download a sound effects dlc pack all of these options are viable it just depends on what route you want to go about. At some point, being an indie game developer, you're going to realize that you have to do everything. You think, oh, I like making games, but I suck at drawing sprites. Well, either you get better at it and you keep trying and you use your less than average sprites in your project, or you pay somebody to do that. And it would help to at least dip your toes in the water, per se, uh, of that thing. So get a, a program. I recommend A Sprite. It's cheap and it's very good for animations in very, very small file size. So it'll work great for mobiles and future. It's very future proof. It's called Ace Sprite, A-S-E-P-R-I-T-E. -E. Um, you could use GIMP, you can use Pixlr, you can use several free resources online. But like I said before, there comes a point in every game developer's career where they realize they have to do everything. So you'll have to dip your toes in the water uh, of programming, go to Free Code Camp, uh, whatever game engine you're using, start learning, at least look at some code, right? Or be prepared to fork over money to somebody who will do that work. Um, or you can just settle for mediocrity and subpar, you know, programming in your game and that's what's good about RPG Maker. You don't have to do everything at the very beginning. You make a few projects, you can release them for free, or if you want to, oh we got a teleport button there. That was in 8 or 9. Let me get this real quick. Oh the zoom. How did I do the zoom? Um, between every transfer event, Dark Hunter, sorry I got on, left on a tangent there, I, I went on a tangent. Um, I'm calling a common event uh, to, to handle all of the zooms in case I change how far I want to zoom in I'm not just specifically doing it in the events themselves I'm calling a common event so I can change the common event and it affects all of the zooms let me change this teleport here so crypt 9 will actually take us to the graveyard not the world map somewhere where do I want crypt 9 This one. And I can delete that and copy this and paste that. And then Crypt 8 I should check as well. This is also not right. So let's fix this. The Crypt 8 is going to go to the graveyard somewhere. So do Crypt 8. And we can copy that, delete this one, paste it there. Okay, so those transfer events should be linked up correctly. Let's look at the common event for Dark Hunter. <clears throat> this is one way to do it. 
So the game engine RPG Maker MV has built-in functions to control the camera. They're just not implemented inside of the event commands window. There should be a tab for, I mean, there's not, but I'm just saying, they should have put in another tab with a whole other slew of commands that the, that's already coded in. They're just not, they, they missed a few things, okay? They missed a few things. And the zooms are one of the things that they missed. But you can still utilize that program functionality. The, you can still call those methods, those functions, by using a script call. So you'll go new, go to tab three, go to script under advanced, and you can tell it what to do specifically. So what we're doing here is we're doing a dollar sign. We're typing in game, capital S on screen, dot start, capital Z on zoom. So we're calling the start zoom method of game screen object. And we're passing in a location. We're saying zoom in to the player's screen X and screen, screen Y. So we have to give it some variables. We have to say zoom in to what X location, comma, what Y location, comma, um, what is this one? The speed of the zoom and I think how long over, I think one of them is speed and one of them is frames, right? Oh, the magnitude. Okay, so this is the magnitude, and then this is over how many frames. So the third argument in this method is looking for the magnitude of zoom. How far do you want to zoom in? We're saying go to this X location and this Y location, zoom in, triple the zoom. So if it's normal zoom is 100%, and if you go in closer, it's 200, and then you get in closer, it's 300 and it'll go all the way down to like a few pixels if you keep putting this number bigger and bigger. And then you put a comma and the fourth argument is asking for the number of frames. How long do you want it to take to get from 100% from to 300%? From the one to three. So I'm saying go to gameplayers.screenx, comma, gameplayer.screen. Why it is capital sensitive? So we're starting with a dollar sign, saying that this is sort of like an object, it's a class. Game player dot screen X, and we have to use the execute to show these two parentheses to show that this is a method of its own. And this is, because we're, we're executing this method to, and this method will return a value, an integer, saying it's actually at this place, or maybe it's a float, I think it's an integer. So X, uh, Y, the number of magnitude, the number of frames. That's basically it. And we're calling this common event every time we do the zoom. So now, if we want to change every zoom in the game, you just change the common event instead of going to every transfer event. Could you just put that code in here? Sure. But then when you want to change the zoom, you know, say that everything zooms in too much, you have to go through all of your transfer events and change it. So it's easy to do things this way using a common event for things that are going to be repeated over and over. That's how I do that. Okay. Are plus 16 games considered plus 18? Um, RJ, I don't know. It depends on what region you live in, probably. I think 16 plus is mature. Ahmed is probably right. But if it's got like sexual content, it's definitely 18 plus in, in uh, the United States of America anyway. Omni Slash says, I'm not going to delude myself. This is a hobby to be a developer of games. Sure, that's a good way to look at it. That way you, you know, you don't get too far up on the ladder so when if it falls through, you know, you just land on your feet. Not a big deal. It's a good way to, to realistically approach what you're doing. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is a fun, it's like, are you gonna shame people for playing like Call of Duty? Is the game fun? 
maybe some people like those games. Are you going to be like telling people they suck because they're playing? No, you're not. That's what they want to spend their time on. That's their hobby. Their whatever. So they can do what they want. Making a game is just like playing a game, except you're stimulating more of your mind because you're having to think creatively. So it's like, are you going to criticize somebody for drawing something? Why would you do that, right? So you shouldn't be getting any criticism for working on your game, and if you are, it's BS, really. Now that's only, that's saying if your other responsibilities are lacking, because any hobby can become a, uh, a problem. Too much of anything can be a bad thing. Too much of a good thing can still be a bad thing. If you drink too much water, you can die, and you need water to survive, right? So too much of anything can be a bad thing. So if you keep your your um, hobbies uh, in line, right, and you don't sacrifice your other responsibilities or obligations, then there's nothing wrong with doing this as a hobby. Listening to the same music loops over and over drives me mad. Yeah. Sound design is essentially drawing music. Yeah. The thing about sound design is you, you want to capture the feeling. It's it's not just um, it's not just what chords you're playing uh, or or what instruments you're choosing. It's what all of these things. The combination. The combination. What feeling do you get? And 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 how to replicate a feeling? You have to look at all of the variables, right? The instruments you're choosing, the dynamics you're, you're choosing to play, loud or soft, or um, the BPM, the beats per minute, how fast is it? Uh, all of this stuff depends on capturing the feel. And you have to ask yourself, okay, on this map, how is the player supposed to feel? And then once you can really give an answer to that, okay, well, he's on a beach, so he's not sure why he's there, but there's birds chirping, the wave, ocean waves are coming in. So even though the player's a little confused, it's sort of like a happy scene. So it needs to be, I want this to feel like a relaxed, slightly happy feel. And then you listen to the music and listening to it. Is this a relaxing, slightly happy song? It's hard to answer some of these questions. And not everybody can do it, and there's nothing wrong if you can't capture, if you can't like listen to a song and say, what does this song feel like? And, and really describe the feeling of the song. And it's not like a skill that everybody has, but you can dip your toes in the water and at least ask yourself the question and, and see, can I identify what the song feels like? You know, maybe you can, or if you just never knew you should try it. Maybe you can't, and there's not, that's fine. Then you'll ask somebody, um, how do you feel on this map? How does the player, it, you can say, how do I want the player to feel? Because sometimes you have to direct, right? You have to direct, say, okay, this is right before a dramatic scene. So I want to get the player a little riled up. So it's going to be a little upbeat, a little um, dissonant. You know, there's going to be some chords that are like diminished or uh, augmented so that you have that dissonance in there. And uh, maybe, a chord progression that's not a simple four chord progression or maybe you're like in a, a pub or an inn you want to use like some ragtime you want to use like some major sevens in there and, and, and sometimes you'll have to pay uh, a composer to get that that music for you or you find some free music uh, and credit the creator of the music there's a lot of free music on SoundCloud and a lot of people would just love for you to put their music in your game but you have to ask them you have to make sure that it is cool you can't just assume he wants to he or she wants her music his music in your game but a lot of them would love they would consider it an honor if you were to proposition them like hey i can't pay you but i'm making this project and i think your song would fit perfect right here 
is it okay if I put it in? They may say no, but some of them would be like, holy crap, they want to put my music in their game? Yeah. So it never hurts to ask. Um, so that's one, one route to go. But still, you have to, when you're listening to music, you think about how does this song make me feel? How does this song feel? Okay, when do I want my player to feel like that? Okay, so I'm gonna put this on this map because this is gonna happen in the story. And I want the player to feel this while they're doing this. And that's how you tell a story. You, you show, you let uh, the music also dictate how the player is going to feel, or at least lead them in a direction. Hurry, retract before Drifty sees. Well, I'm obviously not going to be able to catch everything the moment it appears because I'm doing multiple things, but I'm doing my best. Mushri. <laughs> if you are human, you probably like boobs. It's natural. Unlike violence. Yet, which one is likely to be... You mean more likely to be censored? Yeah. I'm not saying our system is perfect. And... But we still have to follow the the regulations set before us. Boobs are natural and people like seeing them, yet it will cause your game to take an 18 plus rating and you just won't get published at some certain points because of it. But violence is, is unnatural. I mean, some people would say it is, but it's a very um, negative emotion, but it is very like open. Like if you make a game that shoots somebody in the head and there's guts and gore everywhere, like that's perfectly fine. And it, I don't really understand how our system works like that, but that's what it is. And we we just work with what we, what we got and, and try to follow the guidelines that we've, that's been set before us. And if you have a problem with it, you could always take up politics, but who wants to do that? Damien says, explaining sound design, and here I am looking at the 10 plus songs I've currently implemented into my game just for the cutscenes alone. I watched your first 15, Damien, and the sound design is beautiful in that game. I love um, the battle tracks with all the lead guitars, and that's what I'm talking about. It, it really, if you were able to capture the way you want the player to lead them in a direction so that they know what to feel, um, you can really set the mood. That's right. Yeah, so you probably put a lot of money into that too, I bet. And time and effort and repetition to get it right. But it go it shows. It really does show. Okay, we, we went off on a tangent again, talking about all kinds of different things. We have interesting conversations. You guys ask very good questions. That sparks good discussion. Um, we finished the Tarax lighting of the underground, and we fixed the Tarax lighting of under the underground, and we ran through and beta tested all that. We did our beta. Thank you, Chainer. Have a good one. Oh, I'm sure, Damien. Yeah, I'm sure. Because you have to get the player invested in the characters before you actually can pull emotion, right? Before the player can feel anything, if a character dies, the player has to attach themselves somehow emotionally to that character. Uh, otherwise, they won't care that a character dies. Like someone 
oh, this girl d stabbed, nobody cares. But if the player builds a connect an emotional connection to that character, the player can can be invested in that player, that character. If the player can be invested in a character, then when that character gets taken from them or taken from the storyline, it's going to pull on their heartstrings, right? It's going to actually extract an emotional response. And that's where that's where the money's at, right? Extracting an emotional response. What other maps need to rack sliding? Could Terax lighting the the crypts as well? Why don't we do that? Yeah, let's put torches. Let's go to under the underground. And let's just take one of these torches. I'm just gonna copy it really. We'll just copy this torch. And go to crypt one. And let's zoom in a little bit. Let's put a torch here and here. And these will be on by default, right? So we won't have to do a number for these, but just calling the light. Actually, we're gonna delete this page. It's just going to be like this. Just calling the light will turn on Tarax lighting. So now it makes it easy to do all of them because we're just gonna copy this and paste this here and then go here and paste it 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 and paste it, it. etc. windows so I'm tempted to do something with lighting in the windows but I also want to put torches down like here and here here and here and a torch right here to look at it though am I overkilling it probably I'm hoping to have fallen star out by the end of the year to the end of January wow that's soon huh nice oh yeah that makes it much better it's still mostly lit up but uh, it looks better it's it does have its darkness still and the doors are sort of hidden a little bit. We'd have to go over here to see that there's a door. Much better. I'm gonna do that for the next one as well. We're gonna put one here, 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 one here. And I kinda wanna put lighting on these windows. So let's take zoom out a bit and take one of these lighting effects from here copy this and go here and put these lighting effects like this and then see what it looks like is it is it even noticeable I should raise them I should put them actually on the top part because they're facing down. So let's, let's see what that looks like. Doesn't look bad. You don't notice a line or anything.
like it. I'm gonna go with that. Spam some torches too. So go back here, copy these torches. Put one here. One here. One here. One here. I don't want it to be too dark, but I want it to have some shadows. Yeah, just like that. This one would have a torch here, but the, the torch place has fallen apart. Like it's a, there's a hole, it fell through. That looks good. Right here. That one would have a torch on that side, but there's a hole, it fell through. Yeah, it feels much better. Mm -hmm. I like it. Terrax lighting really makes a huge difference. So I need torches in here. This one feels very dark. Okay. The towers need torches. Put a torch here, and a torch here, and a torch here. And wherever there would be... I think that's good. Some torches in the basement. Fallen Star is a reboot of a Thurian tale. Okay. Right. Lupia 2 was a great game. I love Lupia. The Lupia series was cool. They did the, uh, is it Michael Bay? I, I had a, an analogy, but I forgot the name of the person. But they told the story as you start at the end of the game with all your superpower moves, and then um, the story, like that's like the very beginning, and then after you fight the last boss at the beginning of the game, then you go to, to like level one. It was good. It was a really good, like throw you into the fray, and then when you win or lose, you you start the game back at level one. And so it's it's a little bit of overload at the beginning. You're like, I don't understand what all this is doing. <clears throat> but it's a good uh, setup because you, you see what the battles become at the end if you work through. Lupia did a good job. Hey DM, how you doing? Braro? Braro? <laughs> I may or may not be the Kafu. I mean, not my fault. Is that my ISP? I, I think it's fine. On my end, anyway. It may have dipped, I don't think it did though.
That was the first Lufia. Yeah, I like both of them. So I'm happy with the lighting now. The lighting engine that we're using. And it's gonna let us have like spectacular rainbow looking stuff. We should mess around with an event to make like a rainbow at some point. Look at the shadows and the shading. You know, that's great. It doesn't feel so static, even though it's just a little map. We should probably add sound effects to the zoom as well. And it would be easy to add a sound effect to every transfer event just by putting it in the common event because we did a common event for every transfer event, right? Every time you... The torch placement is weird down here, but I'm, I'm okay with it. It's just that little corner. Let's do the transfer... Let's do a sound effect here to see... If it, if it gets too annoying or if it actually adds something. I think you want to have sound effects as many places as possible. I'm thinking of a generic one. That way I can just use it in, in like climbing ropes, climbing, going up and down, descending stairs, doors. So it's just something that's a generic movement. Maybe 105. Separating stairs, ladders, doors, etc. tends to be sound nicer than one for all. I agree. Oh, Damien, you're absolutely right, and we'll have to do that. But for now, since I have no transfer effects except for on some doors, um, I think I should just throw something in the common event. And oh, I know what I can do. I could um, create a variable. And every, every time I do a transfer event, I can say, um, <laughs> like, what is this, this type of transfer? Like, create a new common event. Or, I'm sorry, a new variable inside this common event and call it transfer type. Easy. Transfer expert SFX type. And we'll set it to one for stairs, two for uh, ropes, three for whatever, right? And uh, every time we have a new type of sound effect we wanna call, that way we don't have to edit any of the transfer events. Wait, we still have to edit every transfer event to change the variable, that's right. I guess there's multiple ways to do this.
So it'll be zero by default, and we'll check to see if it's one, and if it is one, we'll play a stairs sound effect. Otherwise, we'll do a sound effect. Conditional branch, if variable, X for sound effects type is one. Then we do the stairs one. Otherwise, we we play that one. to make a stairs sound effect. We'll make some new sound effects. The problem that I had last time I tried to load Audacity is it messed up my microphone. It made it sound, well not messed up my microphone, but it messed up OBS and it made me sound like a terrible sounding robot. I guess it tried to initialize the, the microphones while I was already using them in another program and I didn't have that problem when I first started making them, so maybe it was like a, a freak incident. But it makes me want to do my sound design while I'm not streaming. Five is not enough. Five is not enough. Um, let's try ten or fifteen. That's half a second for the transfer. I'm gonna try ten because I don't want to add a bunch of padding either, just for the sake of sound effects. A third of a second for the transfer. Right. And I'll have to set the sound effects type on um, on every transfer event. This will just be a little bit of extra polish. Right here, it would actually be set to zero because this is like downstairs, down like like a staircase, right? No, not a staircase, a ladder, more like a ladder. So I would take this and I'd be like, um, this is a ladder, and then this is a ladder. Oops. All of the ladder ones, I'd be like. Shh, shh, shh.
Anyway. I might change this system. And then where would I call for like the actual staircase ones? And these maps? I'm actually doing a different transfer event between these maps. Maybe Maybe like right here, I would set to variable one. I don't know. It seems excessive now that I think about it. I should just put the sound effect I want custom to every, well, no. It, it makes more sense to design the sound that you want, like right here, one time, and then just control the variable on that type of sound yeah, so this system is better, right? We would say if one do this, if two this, if three this, and we just have like five different types of transfer sound effects. Like Damien said, more specific for like when you open a door, one specific for when you go downstairs. That makes more sense. It's more polished. Um, and then for like the generic one, we'll have like the ch -ch -ch sound effect. Guys, that's where we're going to end the live stream. I have to do shopping and other stuff today. So thank you guys so much for coming to the live stream. I really appreciate it. Oh, big stretch. We had some good discussions today. You guys are awesome. Remember to stay awesome. If you enjoyed this live stream, please give it a thumbs up, like, favorite, share. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. If you would like to um, come hang out and talk with us, we are on the Discord. The link is in the description below, and you can advertise your stuff there. You can ask questions. There's specific channels for specific engines. If you play other games, you can use those public voice chats and uh, chat rooms if you need to do your uh, multiplayer chats you need a place to do that you can do that in the discord yeah um, yeah if you'd like to follow me on twitter i am at driftwood gaming twitch.tv slash driftwood gaming all the other stuff so if you would like to support what i do i have a patreon patreon.com slash driftwood gaming i offer different reward tiers check that out if you're interested we'll see you guys tomorrow i stream 10 a.m to noon eastern standard time Bye, guys. Thank you for the discussion. Thanks for coming to the live stream. Stay awesome, guys. No problem, Slinky Machine. All the voice channels no one ever uses. Yeah, except T. T uses them quite often when she does her stream. She started to, to do live streams, playing people's games, IGMC entries and stuff. Yeah, message uh, T on uh, the Discord if you want your IGMC game live stream she will ask you to voice chat with her while she's playing it so there's the thing is you have to be able to talk about your game while she's live streaming it if you don't mind doing that then it's free advertisement for your igmc game and uh, you can talk about your vision for the project so yeah that's there and for all of you who wait around to the very end for that asmr content Bye, guys.